17-minute version of uh, the video um, Anton by uh, Paul Katzler. It turns out the volume of it. Before uh, I showed you um, the other video, which is Aloysia, which was running in the background uh, in, the, uh, in the break. These are two videos that were made in the process uh, or in the same um, as the book Land of Milk and Honey, which is also uh, included in the third volume of uh, Iron Badger, um, that was published in 2005. And it's a very direct, very uh, unglamorous, very straight, very documentary, if you want, um, storytelling about these two characters who were the uh, neighbors of Paul Kanzler in, in his flat in Vienna, who are um, Aloysia and Anton, who you see here on the, straight, on the screen. And of course the um, title Land of Milk and Honey makes this kind of reference to a um, well-developed country in the middle and the heart of Europe that sees itself in the tradition of a socially balanced um, politics where people have a very strong uh, network, social network you know, of uh, healthcare and so on. And where you have this completely uh, destructured um, couple in this kind of uh, very strange, uh, partly self-imposed of course, conditions of chaos and, uh, and poverty. Where, who happen to be the neighbors? Okay, so um, 
even more than the book, I think, the videos are very um, provocative in the sense that we uh, talk about documentary. You know, we've talked about so many things in photography and connected to the book today and yesterday. So the documentary factor is uh, maybe one thing that we could uh, also introduce here. You know, the documentary effect of Paul coming in with the camera, you can see at the beginning, you know, he's walking out of his door, you know, knocking on the uh, other apartment, he puts, uh, he asks um, Anton, no, can I, where should I put that? No, I'll put it here and later we'll look at it. We, uh, so we'll watch it together. So he's fully aware of the documentation. They are both fully aware of the documentation. And still, of course, we have this moral, ethic uh, issue of um, the representation of the subject, photographic subject. Can you do that? Are you allowed to do that? Are you, um, so how do you depict these people in this situation to a broader public in a kind of art, documentary, photographic context? So, unfortunately, Paul can't be here today for personal reasons. Um, but I just wanted to put a bit uh, up uh, the video and, um, and maybe you can uh, just pass through the book, which is obviously also on display over there. And I uh, have this as a, uh, one introduction, and then maybe as the other introduction to the subject, I um, have Tony's latest book. Um, and uh, his first book, uh, Pain, which is actually already in the in the audience as two um, of two starting points to uh, talk about the book as a medium for documentary photography and um, of course very much linked to the documentary factor is storytelling narrative space no? we are in an architecture school which is a bit more of so space would you mind uh, space narrative space, book space, um, that's, that's more or less what, what we would like to discuss uh, this afternoon. Maybe in the same way that I've kind of brought into the discussion uh, this project, would you mind to talk about pain and, and, and the new book and to kind of introduce a bit your work? Yes, well, okay. No, sorry. I still have to introduce you. <laughs> Don Alan <laughs> Walsh, okay. um, photographer from Barcelona, from Mallorca originally, but uh, resident in Barcelona, uh, teacher, uh, photographer, and uh, now since the last uh, two years, no, this was last year, came yeah. out, so um, uh, bookmaker, um, self publisher, of course, and uh, somebody who gives birth through his uh, uh, um, teaching position to a lot of uh, book projects and, uh, and uh, documentary projects. Um, anything else I forgot? Biology degree. Okay. I'm a, a biology of degree. course, uh, he is uh, actually a trained um, uh, biologist, so he has a um, master degree in biology, um, which is sometimes um, influencing on the uh, kind of way how he structures his project and very much scientific uh, structure of starting to work, not the work itself, is of course uh, couldn't be far, more far than scientific, but uh, the kind of work, working method uh, of um, structuring the project. So I think that's also important to say. Yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, and I, I make that point on biology because uh, I have always had problems to define myself, so uh, I have done several things in my not that short life already, but I uh, always have that problems. But from, from the way I, uh, what I learned among many other things in the biology, in the biology uh, university is the way scientific work. And it's the way it's like they try to learn from everything that, that has been done in their field till the moment and they try to uh, put something else in that field and they fight for that, but they have to know all that has been done before. And uh, I have to say that I try to work that way on photography. In the subjects I work on, the things I work, I like to, to get to know what has been done before and try to uh, put something, little, something new on the table. And uh, yeah, recently I did those two books. I've been taking photos for a long time. I was wanting to be a... 
I guess for the journalist, when, when I was uh, 18, 19, you know, 20 something, you want to change the world and you want to travel around and blah blah blah, then you discover you are not so good on doing that, or you just get, you just get bored of trying it and it doesn't work, then you discover what the uh, documentary photography is, and then you can, maybe I can do that. If you try to do that, and then you discover you are not so good at doing that either. And, uh, and then you, you realize that, okay, you can do things with books and they are so, you can publish your stuff. No one cares about what you're doing, pretty much. I mean, like I, I, as Morris said this morning, uh, I come from a, if I have to find myself as a photographer, I would say that I'm a wedding photographer. I studied at the university, I studied, I have studies in photography, but where I really learned how to deal with photography was doing weddings. Because I come from Mallorca, and uh, there's no such a big uh, photography market there, so I had to do weddings. And doing weddings means 12 hours non-stop, 200 persons to shoot in very difficult uh, lighting situations, very difficult, uh, you know, a lot of decisive moments and that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot there. And uh, I've been, yeah, with all the, this uh, knowledge, I was wanting, I thought I, I had something to, I was wanting to share my point of view with the world. So after trying to be the human type photography and realize I'm not so good at that, and I said, I don't care. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know exactly, but I, I'm going to do what I think I have to do. And um, for two years, I had a cell phone, uh, not an iPhone, by the way. It was a, a pretty rusty cell phone. And uh, at one point, I was in, in my hometown, and I just uh, a woman crossed to me, and she was amazing. She was so well dressed. She was so well. It was impressive. So I, took, I had to take a photo. The only thing I had was my cell phone, so I took a photo of her. And uh, when I saw it, I thought that that was more vivid than all the super structured images and everything that I have learned of photography. So from that point, I started shooting like crazy with the cell phone that everybody that calls my attention on the streets. And after two years, I had 2,000 images. I print them all. I edit them to 120. Well, at the beginning, it was 200 something. Finally, it was 120. And I thought that if I got to that point, I want to do something with all, all this stuff. And I realized that in my work, uh, all the images that I took was about people not being so well, not being bad, it's not that, I think that's not the case. Like, but in my case, I street photography, it's not that obvious. So I took all the work, and I have many references, and I have many ideas to, uh, to a design studio in Mallorca called Atlas. And we discussed, and finally we got that, I think it's a great idea, I have to say that uh, it's from the designers. Uh, the idea. And the idea is that the book is with those colors here. I know that idea that Spain, has, we, have, we have to work with that uh, word, Spain. So I finally we put the S here, and we call it the, only with the pain. And uh, the book is uh, flipped in Japanese uh, holding, blending. So you have, to, you have to break it if you want to see the images. There's one book there that's already used. But you can so you can see the photos and that's why it, it looks so so rusty. And uh, that was the first book. And why do I this, do all this stuff? Well, we prepare that for uh, I have to say to be honest, we prepare that for a uh, for a uh, uh, concussion contest contest from from a contest for photo books. And uh, I was lucky we get we got finalists, but we were I was even more lucky because we didn't win it. So I, had, I decided that I was going to produce it myself. That's how, how it came out. And um, okay, what else? We, I, I'm, I'm quite happy with, with the work. Because as I said, I got to the conclusion that uh, I'm not a good photographer. I'm not a good photojournalist. I'm not a good uh, documentary photographer. And that's because I don't know anymore what good and bad is. But I know that I can take decisions that are, that are consequent, and I can explain the the, the steps I've, I've been taken to get to that point. So I don't care anymore about the photographic quality. I've been I've, I've cared a lot about that. I have to be honest. But I got to a point that I just said, okay, that's all. I mean, I don't I don't want to push farther that way. I just want to deal with that, but I can do it better in, if I put different kind of things. So that's how it came. And it was quite a success, because uh, uh, I saw, and talking about social media, we've been talking before, 
uh, I did 500 copies. I didn't have, that, that was all the money I had at that point. I have to say now, nowadays also I only have books and doubts. I don't explain why. But uh, I, I could only afford for 500 copies. So that's what I did. And in three months I was able to sell the 500 copies uh, by social media. I put it, we, we did the videos, we did the photos, I did everything and I thought a lot about the how to, because what I really want, and I, there's a quote from a designer saying that my work is to find the process that, uh, above, that the process and that I can skip as much assholes as possible to get to, to the audience. So I like I like that that quote and I, I, I build all the structure just following with that quote. That I, I can directly sell all this stuff through my website and that's what I did. And then I got this uh, for the España Best Photo Book, uh, Self-Published Photo Book Award, blah, 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 which in my habit of, I don't work for, for this, I work to, for the public. So I decided I'm going to do it again. And that's why I only have 1,000 books now, because then I, I made 1,000 books, yeah, almost 1,000 of this. And uh, the thing is that uh, in 2011, we had elections in Spain, and my friends, they were on the squares uh, protesting and taking photos with a movement, it was called 15th M, because we, we are quite fed up about uh, how the democratic uh, period has been, uh, yeah, has been, has, has been developed till now. Because we have only two choices, which is left wing and right wing, supposed to. And there are two main parties, Partido Popular and Partido Socialista. So while my friends were taking photos and protesting in the squares, I thought, who is still believing in that uh, system? So I went to the rallies, and I did all the rallies in the general elections uh, of the two main parties. So finally, uh, this year, four years later, we have uh, general elections again, in 20th of December. Uh, and, and I think it's a good, uh, yeah, learning from the journalists. I learned about that when, when to uh, publish your stuff. So I, think, I thought it was a good, uh, a good moment to, to come with that on the table. So the idea is very simple. I like to work with easy ideas, and I have to. I work with the designers this with this group, but I have taken much more decisions because uh, in that case, because I I was more confident, I have to say, and, uh, and they they were more they were busier, I have to say so. So the idea is very simple. It's it's a book that there are no words in the book, which I like a lot, and it's something I like to work with. Uh, as we say, we don't talk about word books, but we talk about photo books. So, okay, I just say books, and I, I like to use uh, images as words. So on one side you have the, the red ones, and on the other side you have the blue ones. And, uh, yeah, okay. So it's just, I just took portraits of people on the rallies, with a flash, okay. And uh, we built a book that you can have on the, on the two sides. So at the end, that what we are trying to say, or what I'm trying to say, is that it's two faces of the same coin. So it doesn't matter. You can read the book as a, as a normal book, that way. And when you get to the end, you can start again on the other side. And when you get to the end, you can start, which is what has been happening in my country for the last, for the, during the democratic time. And as you see, uh, you can see it. All the old, uh, they are old people, most of them, uh, because the people, it wasn't hard for me to find them. The kind of people that still believe in that system are the ones that are in those photos. And also, I like the idea that you can read it as a, you can, it's like seven meters long, you can put it like that, so it's like a front row of a manifestation. And the title of the book is uh, Devotos, which means uh, devoted. Because they are devoted, they, they have faith, but they have been cheating, politicians in Spain especially, they have been cheating us for the last uh, 40 years, but they still have faith. So that's pretty much the book. So at the end, to close it, uh, what I think, what I do, and, uh, and I think I can do it, I do it better than, than taking photos, is working with concepts. That's the, the idea. Uh, 
and uh, despite uh, I've been trying to skip uh, all the artistic uh, world during my life, at the end when I saw that, and when I saw, I knew the photos, I knew everything, but then when you see it printed and you have it in your hands, I start thinking, which was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that maybe you can, you should stop skipping your your faith and assume that I'm more, I'm closer to uh, conceptual artist than, than photojournalism or documentary photography. So that's my trick. Artist photo book, photo photographer's artist book. He said it. Conceptual film. Conceptual. Very important word here. Yeah, I. I it's I, a, a different tradition in photography. So I would say, if I was thinking about Evan Shea's Sunset book uh, that he did. He photographed that. Uh, what's it called? Sunset Strip, which is the original. You know, that's in people's minds when you see a Leporello mm -hmm. that opens up. You just kind of went with that strategy in mind, but it's a conceptual way. I was going to ask you if you feel that it became a solution for your your seeking. No, but your way you you relate with photography as a you said. Well, I don't think you're a bad photographer actually because the photos are quite good. Yeah, thank but you. it's just probably the way we perceive good photography or done in a certain way. That's it. And this is a solution. This conceptual aspect. Somehow, I'm happy with with the with the final piece. But I always have that problem, you know, and I know that, that uh, yeah, it fits now, but in, in two years it won't fit, so I'll, 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 move, yeah. I'll move. But, but yeah, I, I stop thinking about images one by one. I mean, a bit like the discussion we had before, uh, I, I realized that I didn't feel, and it's a feeling, it's something personal, fulfilled with images one by one, but when I see all the, everything, then it makes sense. So also uh, answering some questions that, We've talked before why to make books. It does a lot of sense to me. For me, I mean, making my own books, and I have all, all those photos on, on internet on my website, and it's fine. But but when I see the book, I feel something really different than, than when I see the images one by one, because because they they live in another in another way. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, when I see the book finished, then I see it. now now it's finished. The work is finished. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And and yeah, uh, asking you a question. Uh, it's like, yeah, this, all these parameters about what a photograph should be, mm -hmm. I think they are, it's important to get to know them, but at the end they are more limiting than, than helping. Yeah. That, that was my feeling. That's, that's why I started using a fly and doing all, all the things that you should never do if you want to be a documentary photographer. Because, uh, yeah, I always like to boycott myself. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, very contemporary, the discussion, and the way you do photography, I think. It's the way, well, I would say it's the way to go for everyone, but it's a solution for this uh, mm. massive amount of photography that has been that mm. is circulating mm. historically and even contemporary yeah. trends. That you need to find solutions that go beyond aesthetic, the aesthetic way of photographing. Mm. Yeah. And uh, would you say that in an exhibition, would you go and try and find a solution, a conceptual solution, or would you show them in frames? With, probably not, I know you could say no, <laughs> but no. just as a way of starting that debate. Uh, you... Yeah, I, I got a, a quote from Moritz. In fact, he, he quotes someone else saying that an exhibition is not putting a book on a, on a wall. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I completely agree. Because mm -hmm. as I said, uh, I don't know if what's good photography, what's bad photography anymore, like everybody's producing amazing stuff, even non-photographers on Instagram, there are people doing very creative things, but my point is, if you have answers to all the questions that you can be uh, said, or, or then it's okay, so same with an exhibition, I mean, if it makes sense to me, the way it's torn, the way it's put on the, on the walls or whatever, then, and, and as we talked, you talked before, like, uh, if it makes sense to put one photo in a book with a, with a white frame, mm -hmm. if it makes sense, it's perfect, perfect. So same with exhibitions. If it makes sense to put like white passport two and da da da, the only thing is that I feel like uh, we can we can do more things. Right. I like that idea, so let's let's try to do it and, and solve more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking that uh, during this um, process of, of 
making the book, you prolong the artistic process. That there's a lot of decisions that you're forced to make, not only regarding the narrowing the 2,000 images and so on, but and it sounds to me that that through that process you become also aware of what your project is about. Or well, well, that well, maybe, maybe not. But, no, yeah, absolutely. But, but, uh, but I think that yeah, if you make a a photo book or you make an exhibition, or it's like you get deeper. You have a chance to get deeper into the subject, and in in um, that you don't necessarily do when you post images on Instagram or Facebook mm -hmm. or something because there's a frame already. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I realize a bit, I mean, the book is the consequence, but I know what you mean. I mean, like taking photos is something, for me at least, is quite instinctive. I mean, I, I don't, I think a lot before and after, but while I'm taking photos, it's just you let it go. Uh, and and then, but the book is like the final piece, and I got the ideas, and but when you start working, then you realize that the ideas I want to, and when I took the, for example, with the second book, I was very aware of what I was looking for, and uh, and I knew like the the structure of the fort, like there must be a face and there must be a um, a flag, you know, so you can you can you can know you, which. And the idea, and here I come with uh, again with the biology uh, background, is like my hypothesis was uh, as a physiognomist is like if I hide all the flags, could you know? Which which party are there? Which, which way they are thinking? Things like that. And when you were, I mean, I, I had that idea, and then that's why I, I came out with, with the idea of the, of the flip flop. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Can, can you tell the difference when you take away the flags? Uh, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny when we um, no, we're both uh, also teachers, no, and when uh, sometimes when you ask students make a dossier or, and, uh, of their work, of their project, and then also involving or including a dissemination plan. So what are they going to do? No? Sometimes I see only I'm going to put it on social media and on my website. <laughs> and that's it. So like 10 or 15 years ago, nobody would have thought about this. This would have been, yeah, okay, I will document the exhibition or the book, and then I will put that as a documentation on my website, but they would never think as a dissemination plan as the first option to put it on on, a, on the web, no, or on social media. That's something that really changed. So I, for me, as a bit more old-fashioned, it's uh, the question is not book or social media, but it was always a book or an exhibition or installation or video or whatever, and then the documentation or um, this kind of breadcrumbs that you give to the audience so that they find you. Um, not like ants that go and um, uh, for me that that was like a, a, a meta uh, dissemination, not dissemination of the dissemination. But um, am I too old fashioned in that? I don't know if it's an open question, but, but I, I, I'm probably also a bit old fashioned, but I think that, that for me as an artist, there's a lot of interesting. Um, things going on when you have to decide kind of what kind of paper do you print on, what size is it, how is it going to be experienced with your own body in the space and like which images do you put next to each other and I think there's, you, you I don't know, I think, um, yeah, as I said before, I prolong the artistic uh, process and um, I don't know, I'm interested in that. I mean, I'm not interested in just being done over and out. And I, I get that feeling with posting images on um, social media or wherever. It's, it's, uh, that, it, there's nothing wrong with that. And you can explore uh, a lot of things um, through that. Um, and it opens another dialogue and you, all of a sudden you kind of uh, have a dialogue with people in New York or Mallorca or wherever. I mean, it's it's um, just really different. 
But I think one, one aspect that you know, often gets overlooked if you know, posting something on social media is that you're signing off some of your copyright yeah. to Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> because when, whenever I publish something on Facebook, <coughs> Facebook has a right to use that image. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there's nothing I can do about it. But, but which, which is, which is, you know, it's their, it's their property to say that I'm using, so that's fine. Um, but it's something at least that you should be aware of when, you, when, you're, when you're publishing something, which is, you know, if I do a book, of course it can be reproduced. Someone can take a picture of your picture and then use it for whatever, but it's more difficult. Um, and um, so that I think that's, you know, me also, maybe, I'm old-fashioned, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm, you know, I use social media, of course I do. Um, but it's still something that's in my mind, whereas nowadays I think it, maybe the generation that you were talking about, they don't even think about that, or maybe they don't even know. But I, mean, I, I see the other way around. I mean, I beg Mark Zuckerberg to sell my photos for a lot of money because I am the one doing the producing. I have the I have the the hand, you know. Uh, I mean, um, but you don't have the revenue. You don't have what? You don't have you. you don't get to see any revenue. When no. he sells the yeah, I know, I know. in his purpose, you don't get to see but, any of the okay, revenue. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stay like in a, like I think that nowadays the value. Is not in the things, but in the in the in the capacity to produce those things, in creativity, you know, like, and, and I think that that's the goal, and, and that's the way I want to struggle, you know. I have the creativity, and and, and no one can take it from me, you know. If I, I, I mean, I, I can give it if I want, but uh, and that's where where for me the value is now, or how it's moving. Like the value is not anymore in the uh, in the forums itself, but in the in the way to produce them. So. Like that. So that's, I, I understand that your point of view, but but I think that nowadays in, in a liquid world, okay, like uh, the way of thinking or my way of thinking is that I I, I can't control that anymore. And the same with my with, I have an open uh, on my website. You can download the images, fine. Because I think like uh, hopefully <coughs> someone can download an image that he likes and he's gonna call me like, hey, I want you to do that work because that's in your portfolio, and not the other way around, you know. I want to, and I know it's something like and when I and I think that now I'm getting old that I feel like I'm starting to get old that yeah I, w I want to live in what I've done uh, not now I want to live in what I'm able to do you know so stuff like that I see the other way around yeah but in the same we we talk about the music world you know yeah you don't sell records anymore. But then you, you have to make concerts. It doesn't mean you can't live on music, but you just have to change the way. Because because you have I have Spotify, four ninety nine euros a month, and you can listen all the music in the world, which I think is great. But if you are a musician, yeah, before it was better. But things, I mean, I can I can fight against that. I think no one no one can. So just be water. <laughs> so but, like and I'm not saying to fight against it. It's yeah, use it. Yeah, yeah. be aware of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to find maybe uh, that's easy. There was this case of a uh, virgin. Okay, I understand now. Uh, there was a, um, this case of virgin telephones. Let's see if we get some virgins here. But uh, I'm actually looking for something else, which of course doesn't show up. Um, there was this case of a virgin telephone uh, advertisement in Australia that used a um, a picture from Facebook, mm -hmm. and um, let's see if I can find it somewhere uh, because it was pretty funny. It was uh, it said dump your boyfriend or something like this, and she was with a cell phone and. Uh, and so if you dump your boyfriend and you need somebody new to chat, you know, you get a virgin phone or a card and then you've got access to a new life, something like this. That was the argumentation of the advertisement. But that was a photograph of a girl who was there with her friends uh, at a barbecue party um, somewhere else on the other side of the planet. And then she found out why her people who were like, you saw that, you know, uh, ah, you're on the, you know, they're there. And then she sued and she actually, you know, won and they had to kind of take it back. I mean, it was not a case of an artist 
artistic picture, it was a, a kind of a souvenir picture, no? um, but it was kind of taken from the social media and uh, I think it's not that you don't have any right of your image when you put them on Facebook. But that was Virgin using one image that was published on Facebook, it was not Facebook itself. Because yeah. Facebook would have had the chance but to the, because they but the girl won, not you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, it was not that, okay, you, did, you are not allowed to use it, you should pay now this something to Facebook. No, she, uh, you know, got her image back or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, maybe, maybe it's a different... It's a different I it's think they different changed topic. a bit yeah. their uh, yeah. whatever, but it's... Um, May I have another point? Uh, it's like, I produce, and I, 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 on purpose, I, I got to that point a long time ago, and, I, and I, on purpose I produce images that I'm sure that no one would like to use. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's it. That, that's that's yeah. how it's keep the problem. I mean, or that they are so. I mean, there's only one way to, to look at my image. I'm sure. I, I love it. I love it. If someone uh, takes my photos and uses it in another way, uh, but uh, I, I I try to do photos that that cannot be used out of outside the uh, how they are work for stuff like that. Okay, yes. You know. No, I can just add to that Facebook uh, thing today, but on the feed that I get on Facebook, uh, I just got this morning that David Bailey, the photographer from the 60s, he actually is now complaining to the Parliament in London, in England, where they are trying to pull through a legislation that orphans, orphans is, is babies that don't have any parents, but they also call orphans pictures that don't have any orphans. Right. Yeah. That orphans can be used without any reference to, because there is no orphan. But David Bailey's point is that if you go through the internet, your image will soon become an orphan, because um, somebody will grab the image and then use, use it in another context, and all of a sudden, your image will be an orphan, and can be used free of charge by anybody, even virgin. And that, that bill is actually uh, right now being pulled through the parliament in, in England which is horrendous. But it's, it's also a question whether, um, is, it, is photography a commercial thing, or is it a communication thing? Bingo. Yeah. For me, it's the, we, for me it's the second one. Huh? For me, it's the second yes, one. Yes, I, I sense that, because uh, I also heard you say that it, you're a lousy photographer. Lousy? And that you're, you That's didn't... You didn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, and I... I I can't explain that. I mean, when I see my word, I don't feel like these, those are great images, you know. No. I just feel like, okay, that's, that's what you were able to do, but it's... But, but, but still you communicate. That's it. Bingo. That's it. So, Bingo. but I have to change, I mean, uh, what we talked before, I have to change my mind and say, okay, they, are, they communicate enough, so just keep on working on that. But, but uh, yeah, maybe that's why I don't treat really well my images, so I don't care about it. If you want to use them, or it's good. <laughs> But yeah, so just a footnote, it was your pen friend, not your boyfriend, mm -hmm. anyway. So, but here you can see the original picture and you can see the, the, uh, it was turned around. So maybe they tried to yeah, uh, avoid yeah, yeah. mechanisms of uh, image uh, recognition, but they could not avoid somebody traveling to Australia and say, oh, I know that person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More questions or? So, um, narrative space no, of the book. So in yours, uh, in your second book, uh, apart from of course the reference that uh, uh, you said um, Jose Luis could also take uh, Guy Dillon's book from the late 90s, early 2000s, no, um, from Johannesburg that yeah. was also a yeah. uh, 10 meter long uh, yeah. Le no? There are many. And there are many others of course. Um, it was more of a portrait book, so maybe that also fits better in. Um, so at what time, or at what time of the process, at what point of the process uh, did you decide to activate this three-dimensional space um, <laughs> with your narrative space, or using narrative That's space? Good question. I think that when I felt confident and I have uh, enough uh, money to do it. Because I've been wanting to do it for a long time. No, no, really. That's that's. that's uh, I'm trying to be honest. Uh, I, I always thought. I mean, I, I think like uh, the way of looking at photos. It's, it's like in publications. Whatever it means, publication. You know, it can be a magazine. It can be a book. It can be. But in in, in physical way, I like to, to see images that way. I consume the, those images. 
And then I always, uh, I think, no, I can say for sure now that, uh, that my principal uh, spending thing, I mean, I have spent most of my money in my life in books, all kind of books, <laughs> the ones I do and the ones I, I consume. And, uh, and that's why I like a lot the idea of the book, because I think the photographs suit perfect in, uh, in publications. And the idea that uh, is the best way, as we talked before, also as a vehicle, uh, for me, the, and also coming from biology, is, is kind of a seat. Book, a book should, should have the same structure as a seat. You know, in a seat you have a DNA pool. Seed. Oh, okay. Seed, okay. Seed, semilla, yeah, seed, S-E-E-D. -E -E. Uh, has a DNA pool, which is so concerned, and, but also has a, a three-dimensional uh, structure, which is, is, is engineering. Yeah, and some can fly, and some can go through the sea, and some can go there, all, all kinds of seeds. So that's why a book should be, and, or that's why coming from internet is fine, it's perfect, but you can, I think you can make your world travel better with, with the book idea. And the idea of a seed is that, uh, also maybe becoming from an island, it has been, has been tough for me to get out of the island, which I'm still working, <laughs> not, to, not to spend all my life in the village which is a very nice village, by the way. Uh, but uh, I, I, my references came from books, most. So, I mean, or I, I had the chance to get to the information, to get to photographers through books. So that's why I, I, I always wanted to just do it the other way around. And, uh, and I, I, yeah, I like, I, I was wanting to work for magazines at the beginning when I started as a photographer, which is kind of pretty much the same. But, I'd now, and I said so, if there, were, if there were magazines interested in the kind of work I want to do, because yeah, I want to do my work, I don't want to do someone else's work, or, or I don't want to be taught how to photograph or how, what to do, I, I wouldn't do books. If there were magazines uh, risky enough to, to publish that kind of work, it would be perfect to me. And if you get paid for that, of course, which is the other, the other part of the, <laughs> of the work. But uh, I would need to do, but as no one cares about the kind of photography I do, so I decided to do it myself. When I was able to, by my current muscle. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they, for example, in the old times, no, before the internet, um, of course, um, photographers, as you said, no, um, they used to. Um, know about the world and especially about the photography world through the through the books no when uh, uh, I'm sure there was uh, some exhibitions on photography in Mallorca but maybe once a year twice a year three times a year about one or two or three or whatever but, uh, which is of course not the same density as in uh, buying a book of a photographer and then yeah. having either the whole oeuvre no? uh, or at least the one um, project in one book. So this is, uh, of course, it's a traveling seed. Uh, or sometimes even a whole flower pot, no? <laughs> a traveling flower pot. Um, what do you think about, uh, unfortunately, Paul can't be here to defend his work, but what, what do you think about uh, the, um, you know, the use of the document? I mean, why do you think that the videos that we have been showing before, like they give another dimension of this book uh, to the book, or do we need that, or uh, uh, put, uh, any opinion about that? Because we had some talks yesterday, uh, internal with uh, Pirko, but I don't see her now. Um, yes. No, about yeah. this. Um, yeah. Oh, there you are. So, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, it's tall. Danish people, you know, you kind of disappeared back there. Um, what, what do you think, like, um, on, this, uh, on this dimension of the book and the video mm -hmm. uh, and the documentary approach uh, um, to the subject and the, uh, the way how to represent the other, no? right. the photograph? I mean, uh, now we were talking about uh, video work or this certain publication, right, and the distribution of that video in the internet. It's kind of, uh, I didn't see that. Uh, did you show that video here? No. It's here. This video is the, the, the oh, one over there. Know. It's it's unpublished, so I don't think it's, uh, you can't even see it on the internet. I ah, think. Yes, it's, yes, uh, yes. Uh, it's the first time we show it, actually, uh, or he shows it. Yeah. So that's why he was really sad that he had to cancel, because yeah, it, right. it's the first time it's oh, shown yeah, publicly. Yes. The two, these two videos, no? Uh, uh, Anton and yeah, Aloysia. Right. No? I think they are completely two different mediums. 
Yeah. And of course, there are also, for me, there are also two different worlds of art, I would say. Because it's, uh, I mean, moving image is completely different thing than, than photography, in a way. And in this certain case, he just, uh, is, he left the camera to the room and goes away. So it's kind of, if you can call it poor, poor documentarism <laughs> in a way, without no artist intervention. So it's a very direct way of documenting something happened. Instead, when you take photographs, it's another kind of situation. You are involving yourself as an artist, as a photographer, into the situation. You are together with the people who you are photographing. And uh, that's a completely different thing. Then. So I don't know what else to say. No, it's more a document than a documentary. Uh, yeah, that, it's a documentary. No, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Of course, that's true. And still, he uh, elevates it, you know, by saying a video by Paul Kranz. He could have said a video by a video camera, no? He says a video by Paul Kranz. No. Um, so he elevates it to authorship uh, because he, no, he, because they were his neighbors. He went there and he, you know, had the idea. I guess. But I would actually disagree um, because to me, uh, making something art or whatever is a question of decision, and it was his decision to set up the camera there and put it there and make it going, rolling it actually, you know, recording. Um, so for me, whether he was behind the camera or not, it makes a difference in the uh, in the interaction. But it was his concept to leave the room. Yes, of course. So it was um, it was very much a piece of art of him um, because he was actually making the decision to do it that way. Yeah, that's true. But when you make a photographic book, it's also so that the photographer is selecting out of many photos the final solution, right? But in this case, in the video, there was something in certain time. I think it's the time that the book takes, and what is it, one hour maybe? It's what? the time of the film. It's one hour, yeah. It's an hour, yeah. It's an hour. This is the yeah. short version. But it's not only, only the artist decision, it's also the decision by the people whom he is documenting or photographing, right? Because they have decided that they are there, that they do what they do. So it's in a way collaboration. It is, but it's, it, originally it's his decision to let that happen because he was initiating the process. He, it was his idea to, to, you know, to do it, yeah, so to approach the people with the camera, to set it up, and yeah. to let this interaction happen, whatever it may be, whether it's with him as a person or just with his camera. So I think it was it was very much his project because it was his idea of doing yes, it. Yes, of course. Yeah, but just talking about how different they are. Oh, yeah. sure. sure. And the questions are all, I mean, maybe on a second level, questions also this uh, notion that we had today in a discussion about the photo montage, uh, filmic montage, sorry, uh, and the montage in the, in, in the book, no? So this clearly is at the end of the book, or towards the end of the book, no? Where she dies, uh, they have, they're leaving the flat and he goes to the hospital, he's still alive, um, and Paul visits him from the hospital from time to time. So it's like an ongoing series because, you know, he could have closed the book and say, you know, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but um, he's actually still in contact with him. Uh, there is um, some photographs that are not in the book, for example, where he's using the coffee cups of the uh, hospital uh, to pour in the, his beer and uh, drink the beer and, and, and stuff like this. So he doesn't learn anything. Um, but of course, you have you have the uh, filmic compression of time, no? So the whole uh, everything that's happening um, is compressed in time. Whereas he, here you have uh, no or a very direct one-to-one -one relationship between real time and filmic time, no? So because what you what you see is what is happening, which is exactly nothing. He is not doing anything but smoking and coughing and spitting and drinking and. Mm. Listening to the news. Yeah, because there's no editing. It's just That's a single exactly. shot. Exactly. So it's very structural. I would say there's a technique in, that I've been looking at in film that could match photo book making. That's the coolest shot effect, where you 
juxtapose one image, let's say you would take a, a shot of my face, you film it, and then you juxtapose that with something else, and that's what this effect is. So if you put a plate of food, if I make a sad face, plate of food, I'm hungry and depressed. If I put a coffin, I'm really sad because someone died. But it could be interpreted in any other way if you juxtapose it with something else. So you can obviously books do that, as I showed with uh, certain examples from the 20s, where they start doing that. And I think it's influenced by that idea. It's just the, the, this perception of time. As you say, it's more complicated. It's there, but it's in a different way. It's, uh, and in film, you can, you know, I, I find the book more, well, it's shocking, obviously, it has, uh, it's harsh. Whereas the film, you don't get that, because you could have done that in a, if he filmed it in a certain way, obviously. Mm. But he chose to be more, you feel it's more removed, it's more, you know, you can't, um, it's a different relationship. Photographs are, they kind of hit you hard, because they're a selection of something, mm. it's like a moment, and he goes after really, really specific things. With film, he doesn't do that, and probably because he's not a filmmaker also, he's trying to do this mm. on the side. Mm. Um, you, I mean, probably you get the dimension of their life if you watch the whole thing. And, um, but uh, it's, it's just a different way of approaching the subject with a different medium. And I think the book in itself, uh, that discussion of being a medium, um, I would say that photography is a medium. The book can be a medium, but not all the time. So it's a very tricky way of looking at it, whereas film is a medium in itself. You know, it doesn't... We didn't really question, uh, answer that question. No, they, because they, I think yeah. it's... Depends. If I think a photo book, it's the difference between being a vehicle for something and being the medium in itself. Whereas I think in photo books, photography is the main medium, if you want. Like a traditional way, like Hans Clement, it's about the photographs, about looking at images, like there, in a way. It's really about those things, about being a photographer. And in your books, especially in this one maybe, yeah. uh, is photography the medium? No, or because is, he, is he's a bad photographer, so yeah. he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so for him, it's more about, well, I would say, I argue that it's not about photography, it's yes. about creating something with it, where the book is becomes as a medium. It's not a vehicle for just showing the images that he's documenting. So you have to be a bad photographer to have no, uh, the book working? No, I think, I was going to ask you, do you feel there's a difference between pain and the new one? Because I think pain is more you not caring about images, yeah. but I think the new one, yeah. you're already more interested in yeah. formal aspects of photography. And I, I promise someday I'll do a photo book. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you go there. I'm, I'm getting into it. Yeah, that's but interesting. No, 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 really. And, uh, and now with perspective, uh, I think the, the book fits perfectly to me because I've been always hiding about being a photographer and all that kind of stuff I mean, because I don't feel comfortable with la labels. Mm -hmm. so, so that book was perfect for being like the first book because I'm hiding as a photographer also in that book. In the second book, it's, and it was, I have to say, it was quite tough to me. Like, uh, and uh, it sounds like kind of a cliche, but it's true, that when I saw it printed and everything, I got scared. I got really scared, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, uh, because for several reasons, I have to say. Like, one is like, I, 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 I told to myself, you've done that, so watch out. And the other thing was like, no one's gonna, no one's gonna buy that, mm -hmm. so you're fucked up. So, <laughs> it was this combination of those two feelings. Now, it was three weeks ago, I tell you, now I, I'm, I'm fine with that. So I, and I, I did the same exercise again. I say, uh, um, just go over it. If nobody buys the book, it's fine. You are ruined, but you can keep on working on other things. So that, and it, uh, you've done that, but it's fine. Don't worry, keep on working. You know? but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm becoming a photographer, I guess. Good. <laughs> Looking forward to <laughs> Yes, for yeah, that's what's talking about the, the narratives and the mm -hmm. editing of uh, photography in the in the sequence. Mm -hmm. And you said you said to something about you took more than two thousand photos yeah. and you edited it down it to this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, couldn't you just tell us a little more about but I think there's a lot of when you say you're a bad photographer, but I think it's a, you know, it's every photograph is uh, I mean a single person they seem not to be communicating that or at least they're not talking or something like that. Uh, there must have been, and you also told us about you had this uh, master degree in uh, uh, bio biology, or yeah. was, was, was that? and that could somehow influence your methods. Could, could you just tell us a little about the selection process? Or yeah. How, what, 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 how do you came up with this solution or yeah. this, this sequence of photographs? Yeah. Uh, how they, the how they, how they, how they, 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 they treat the photographs? Yeah. I try and uh, I try to do everything 
the other way around. I like to I like to do, to do that kind of thing, but I have to take all the wrong decisions for for the book. Like uh, like you have to break the book and the that the the photos are here and there. And I, I thought yeah, I had to do the same with the editing. So I, I choose the photos that I like less, and I try to put together the images that didn't work together. So to create even more tension. So I, I have to. I try to push to the limit because I know that works. Even even that's what I say. I, I don't like pretty much because because it goes uh, against my conceptions. But I like also to go against my conceptions. I think that that's my work. I think okay? to to be able to have like a, a wide review. So I, I choose the images that when they put them together, it's like that's not gonna work. So go for that. <laughs> <laughs> And I understand because I was a bit involved in the editing process and I, I, I get, made yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a proposal yeah, that's and then you did it the other true. way around. I was like, uh, yeah, 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 why yeah. did you ask me? No, I have to, the I, way so it seems to be yeah. that everything I proposed, uh, you know, it just <laughs> took the other way around. Yeah. And I have to say, I had influence. Or it's in the place because he did an amazing work with yeah. editing because I was completely lost. So I, I, I remember I gave him a half second and he said, yeah, don't worry. And even I have like a three hour class. I remember perfect that day. And I said, okay, and she said, go to your class, don't worry, come back in three hours. And when I came back, he had done all the editing, with, uh, he had done the, a book itself, no? like, like with, uh, with copies, like the working copies. And, I said, and then, well, then that day I, I realized that, yeah, that, that starts shaping like a book, you know. But then I, I thought the other way, and I, I was wanting to take it uh, farther, so I, I do it all, all, all the way around. But I, I was, I was uh, very influenced, and... As I said, I mean, uh, I, I tried to have like logical uh, answers to, to the questions. I was very influenced, uh, I thought, I, I, I don't invent anything. Like, like I said, like the scientists, with, with, with my knowledge of what I can learn from, from everywhere, I tried just to put it in, in, in photography or whatever I do. So I was, uh, you know, uh, Alan Ginsberg with, with the whole and all the beat generation. Somehow I realized, but afterwards, it, it wasn't... Uh, Meditated. I realized that I was doing pretty much the same on photography. I mean, those guys were writing about what's going on on the streets, and they were using bad words, and they and I like that idea because I said that's what I'm doing with my cell phone. Like I'm doing like I'm, I'm using bad photography, bad words. So so there is no structure in in the, the kind of poetry. I mean, there is at the end, but but they don't care, and it's very repetitive structure and that kind of things. So when I, I when I was able to think about that, I said, okay, I, I can do it on photography. So, so I do it. So it, it can work because I copy from from all of I still, to be honest. So I, I was very influenced about. It. And and at the end, then I realized after even more that the those guys were working during a during a crisis, uh, economical, uh, moral crisis. So what's what, what's going on in in my country now? So. Good. Shall we do a last round of questions before we're wrapping up? Is there anything you would want to know? I just want to see if you could talk a little bit about your relationship with the designers. Because that's something that I think could be useful for yeah, yeah, students. Yeah, absolutely. Because the collaborative aspect of your bookmaking is very, very interesting. We talked about people doing it on their own from mm. scratch. In your case, you went and talked to designers. What, that, what did that bring to your process? Why do you felt the need to do that? And, uh, is it something you want to keep doing or eventually not? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, um, in that case, is I, I, I knew that they had a really great studio, I mean, it's Atlas Studio, they, they work and they do books and for, for important photography, important people, mm -hmm. and I really admire them. And by chance, they moved to Mallorca, and uh, by chance, they needed some photos of their studio for uh, American Magazine, and they contacted me, so that's why we get to know each other. And uh, at what point I, I realized I want to make good, but I don't know how to do them. I can, I can, I think that uh, I, as, let me, let me, let me, yeah, as, as every human, uh, I was born without knowing to do anything, but I'm able to learn everything. That's, that's what I think. But I, but I said, okay, I can try to learn how to do it, and I can spend the next 10 years. I've been for 15 years studying photography, that's why now I am. I feel confident to produce, so I can spend 10 more years studying design, but I don't have that much time, so why not go to someone that has been the, all this time uh, studying this and, and just 
try to work together. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why I came to them and I, I saw, I showed them my work and they say, yeah, yeah that's one thing, we would like to work on that. And the thing is that they, I think that they saw that uh, we can do whatever with that guy, you know. We, we have this, we knew each other from before and we had the connection and they said they are very happy and he has won several uh, awards on design also the book because they realized this and, and we talked about that because they said when photographers come here uh, they, please don't crop my photo, please, I need to know, I want to know. and I say, hey, I have that, I don't know what to do, I want to do a book and I know Alan Ginsberg and I know that I want to talk about crisis and I know that S and pain, we have to work with that and, and but do whatever you want and, and that's why, I mean, they, they feel free and confident and, 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 and yeah, I, I admire and respect their work a lot, so that's why, and, and they came with that and they told me, we've done that, and when I saw it, I was, I was almost crying, I said, yeah, you, all, you perfectly uh, translated my ideas into a book, so, yeah. So this, this is someone that, because there is a tradition in book design, that I would say photo books are done in that way, because design, <laughs> there's engage with photography in a certain way. You had to look for someone that could understand also what you were trying to say with your project. Um, was that the first attempt? Did you talk to other people that didn't get it at all? Or no, it was project? my first attempt. That was good, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to say that... Uh, it can be a battle, that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. The designers, no. because they yeah. perceive the book in a way and images as illustration. <laughs> yeah. In your case, they just went. Yeah, through. but I have to say that I, I think I, I, I got into photography somehow because I think when you when you use a camera and you photograph, you learn also. It's it's not that uh, it's not something esoterical. Is it? You learn when you deal with people in photography. You learn to see how, how a bit how uh, about feeling. Or I work a lot like that about feeling. So when I got to when I met them, I got a feeling. I said, those guys. I mean, you know, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get well each other. So. I just go for that. Same people that are doing your second book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the second book, I've been taking more decisions. And uh, oh, we were, I mean, I have to say, like, uh, in the first the first book, they came with, with the idea of the flag and with the idea of breaking. So, which, which I think is the, the book, it works uh, basically you know, because of that. And in the second book, it was, they were very busy. So I came with ideas. And, and they and they were doing a kind of men mentoring and saying, that, that's, that's not going to work. And fine, we got to those final ideas. And of course, I have to say, to, also to be honest, that uh, I have like many friends working in this field, and, and we talk about that. I mean, how, so at the end, you, you sign the book, but there's a lot of people that yeah. has been taking part. And I, I as you said, I, as a teacher also, like I try to I, I to avoid, and I, I don't uh, agree at all with the idea of the guy working alone and only in my studio, and then I got that. No, I don't work that way. I mean, I, I need to watch TV, I need to to go to the cinema, I need to talk with my friend, and then with all those ideas, it comes. So, yeah, it's, it's that way. Then you sign the book because you are the. I I see myself uh, with the book story more like a, like a, like a film director. Than, than, uh, and I like that, or like an uh, um, uh, artistic director, or something like that, you know. So I choose, same with, with the second book, on Monday I'm going to launch it on, on internet. I, I asked a friend of mine to do music for the video. Like, Why not? I, mean, I want to do more things than photography. So. Yeah. Good, so thank you very much. My pleasure.